Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a $50 meal plan slash meal prep that is vegan for the work week from Trader Joe's. Okay, a lot of descriptors there, but basically this is part of my new two-part series in which I give myself a budget, go to the grocery store, film a grocery haul, and then show you guys some recipe ideas or things you can make from that grocery haul. So part one of this two-part segment uh, went live earlier this week. So if you haven't watched that yet, I will link it here. It is my grocery haul from Trader Joe's so you can see everything that I got for $50 and what I'm originally planning to do with it. In this video, I'm going to show you how I prepped all of these foods to make enough meals to last me for breakfast, lunch, and dinner during the work week. So I have two things to say before we get into the actual recipes. First, I would like you to tell me what store you want me to shop at next. So leave a comment down below and tell me if you'd like me to do another one of these hauls at Trader Joe's. So if you suggested Walmart, I could go to Safeway or like another grocery store, um, but your input matters the most so the one that has the most upvotes on it is the store that I'm going to do next so read the comments vote for the ones that you want to be next and then second I just wanted to say that instead of organizing this meal prep by breakfast lunch and dinner I decided to organize it by time and then the way that I decided to prep things in order for this to be the most efficient meal prep possible so we're gonna be prepping different components of different meals at various times but at the end I'm gonna show you how everything comes together so just wanted to clarify that that's all for now so let's get into the recipe slash meal prep okay so like I just said we're gonna start our meal prep by prepping some various components before we go on to full meals so first up I decided to chop all of my vegetables up and get them in the oven and roast them because it takes a little bit of time and it's also the most efficient way because you can just put everything on a pan and then roast it all together so I chopped up some eggplant as you saw put it in a bowl and here I just cut the broccoli florets off of the stems and I'm chopping them up. I'm gonna use the stems in a different way later. And then here I'm taking some carrots and then I'm just chopping them up. You can peel the carrots if you want to, but I wash them pretty well and peeling is a hassle, so I don't do it um, if I don't have to. So while I was doing all that, I preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I'm going to put all of my veggies on one big old baking sheet. So I have this extra large baking sheet, um, which is really convenient. I just put two reusable silicone mats on it. But if you don't have this, you can obviously just use two baking sheets um, and line them each individually. So first up, I'm going with eggplant. I really don't like eggplant when it's cooked without oil. It's just like very dry and rubbery. Uh, but that being said, if you don't want to add oil to it, you don't have to, but I'm just using the garlic infused oil from Trader Joe's. I coated it in the eggplant, spread it on a part of the baking tray, and then here I'm coating it with some salt and black pepper. And then I just spread that out a little bit. And then I actually do like my broccoli dry roasted. I like how the edges get crispy. So for that, I just put it straight up on the tray and then put some more black pepper and salt on it. If you have some other seasonings you'd like to add to this, you could definitely sprinkle those on top too. But I'm just keeping things simple here. And then next up for the carrots, I added another splash of that garlic infused olive oil, tossed it around a little bit and then transferred it to the tray. And again, hit it with some S&P, but I'm not gonna show you. And then last but not least, I have these mini pearl grape tomatoes. I just rinsed them off really quickly. And then I transferred them to the tray as well, seasoned them with salt and pepper you get a theme here <laughs> it's very easy and very delicious and then just added a drizzle of oil on top of that to make the skins blister a little bit so this is what the tray of vegetables look like it's all nice and colorful and pretty and the good thing about this is it's all just gonna go in the oven and we can forget about it for about 35 to 40 minutes so we're gonna pop that in the oven and move on to our other things so my cutting board is already out so I decided to continue with my veggie prep so for the broccoli stems I'm actually going to use these in a pasta dish and cut them sort of thinner like noodles so first you want to peel the outer stem of the broccoli because it's a little tough and then just slice the rest of it into thin strips or you can just dice it finely whatever your whatever floats your boat and then now we're going to cut the red pepper and I wanted to show you this cool way that I like to cut red pepper so you just slide the knife around the bell pepper to sort of cut it into four segments and then you just twist it away from the core and you actually get like every piece of the bell pepper and you're just left with the core and then you can pick the white parts out of it my friend Brooke showed me that so shout out Brooke um, before you just cut off the sides and I felt like it wasted more but now we're gonna use our handy dandy mandolin to thinly slice these bell peppers um, use gloves or use this safely obviously this is a sharp tool and be careful you can slice it with a knife as well but in terms of time saving and if you really want like thin even slices I recommend using a mandolin. I use it almost every day. 
And then last but not least, I had two carrots left that I didn't roast and I just decided to chop these into some carrot sticks to use for one of my meal prepped lunches. And then to store these, I just put them in a glass container and covered them in water. This keeps them nice and fresh and then not from drying out and like becoming like limp and soggy, which is kind of gross. And then last but not least, while my cutting board was out, I decided to cut and prep my tempeh. I just rinsed the package off and then cut it in half and sort of like squeeze uh, the two halves of the block out. And then I sliced it up into strips and we're going to cook this a little bit later, but just wanted to get that out of the way. So then now moving on to some more of the cooked components of our meal prep. First up, I decided to cook this Rossoni that I got from Trader Joe's. I just followed the instructions on the package. I brought some water to a boil and then added the grains in and you're supposed to simmer it uncovered for a few minutes. Um, but I also decided to chop about two cloves of garlic and cook that with the risoni as well to just give it a little bit more flavor. And I added some salt and pepper too, because again, more flavor. So you basically simmer this and then cover and let it stand until the liquid is absorbed. But then after that was done, I just stirred in a can of those white beans that I got. I just briefly rinsed them and then mixed everything together and then set that aside to use later. So while that actually simmered, I went ahead and cooked the lentils. First, I just added a splash of water to a pan and then added some minced garlic to, again, add more flavor and wasn't working with much here. Then I just added these lentils to the pan so they come out like really hard. I don't know. I've never cooked these before. I think I definitely prefer canned lentils, but after I broke them up with a spatula, I also decided to add a little bit of Italian seasoning to add some more flavor. You could skip that if you don't have it. But once they were broken up, they kind of reconstituted well and it was fine. Um, it's definitely like a firmer type of lentil, but I just cooked them until the garlic was nice and fragrant and the flavors were infused. And then last but not least, our last stovetop cooking thing is to season our tempeh. So I just put that sliced tempeh in a pan. You want it to be able to evenly cover the surface of the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna add about a cup of water and turn the heat on to high. Again, wow, look, I added some pepper. And we're also adding in our pesto here. So the pesto is sort of like our seasoning slash marinade for the tempeh. I have a few different recipes on my blog that uses a similar technique to this. So I thought I could just add the pesto in with the water while the tempeh came um, to a boil and it would be fine. So I like to add extra water to the pan because this steams the tempeh first. It helps it to puff up and also remove some of the bitter flavor. And then you're just going to cook this down until all the water evaporates. So you don't really have to marinate the tempeh. You're not wasting your time doing that. And then at the end, it becomes nice and coated and infused with pesto flavor. So that was nice and easy. Just set that aside. And then at about this time, our veggies were done roasting in the oven. I thought that this was a good crispy level for me. If you wanted them to be a little crispier, you could definitely cook them for longer. And we also still needed to cook our flatbread from Trader Joe's that we were actually going to turn into sandwiches. So I carefully uh, tried to cut this in half so then I would have even sandwich slices. And the oven actually needed to be a little hotter for this. It was at 425. So I raised the temp while I was prepping this. I just put some parchment paper on a baking tray and then put the bread on there. The instruction said to drizzle it with a little bit of oil and then brush it on, I think to make it brown a little more. Um, I don't think you really have to do that, but I just wanted to follow the package instructions. And if you want to do it, you still totally can. So then you're just supposed to pop it in the oven and bake until it turns about golden brown. So eight to 10 minutes or so. So once I was happy with the amount of uh, oil spreading, I went ahead and popped that in the oven. And then while that was cooking, I decided to prep our breakfast. So I'm actually giving you two options for breakfast. We're gonna have oatmeal, but I'm giving you an overnight oatmeal option and then a sort of instant oat option. So either way, we're all gonna need the same basic ingredients. I'm using some rolled oats for this, but you could also use quick oats um, as well. So you're gonna add anywhere from probably about half of a cup to a cup of oats, depending how hungry you are and how many oats you want into a jar. And then to that, you're gonna add a tablespoon of flaxseed. I like this because it helps to thicken the oats and also provide some extra fiber and healthy fats. And so I just close the lids on the jars and shook it up kind of a little, as you can see the one on the right didn't work so well. And then for our overnight oats, we're gonna add the peanut butter now um, because we didn't buy almond milk or anything and this is just an effective way to sort of make peanut milk. So you're just gonna add some liquid to the jar and then mix everything together. And as you can see, the peanut butter kind of dissolves into the water to make a peanut milk. So we're just gonna let that sit for a few minutes to thicken a little bit before we add our toppings. And then now I'm gonna show you the more instant oat option. So you can just seal this jar and take it to work as is. And then when you get to work or school or whatever, you have access to hot water, you can just add hot water directly into the jar. You could also microwave the jar too, but I just prefer to add hot water, mix it, and then let it sit. 
for a few minutes and then wow, it thickens so beautifully, excessive spirit fingers. So at this point your oats are still hot, but they're also nice and thick. So now you can just add your toppings. I added some peanut butter. I guess you could add peanut butter with the hot water too, but I just prefer to put it on top when I'm having hot oatmeal. And then I kept it simple. We're just using one of our bananas to top off our oats. And then for the overnight oats, once they've thickened too, that's when I like to add my toppings, AKA more banana and peanut butter. But I know some people prefer to eat their oats cold. Some people like them hot and made instantaneously. So you got two options and do with that what you will. So at this point, our flatbread has finished cooking and my camera, the little pesky uh, no focus action here. But as you can see, it's still nice and brown on both sides. And now we're just gonna set that aside and begin to assemble our meals. So first up, our Monday, Wednesday, Friday lunch, which is a salad. We're gonna start by adding a handful or two of greens into a bowl, and then a third of those cooked lentils that we made earlier. And then we're gonna top it off with some of that sliced red bell pepper and some roasted veggies. So for this salad, we're going to be adding the eggplant and the carrots that we roasted. Then you can just toss it all up to have everything be a little bit more evenly distributed and then just put a lid on it. We're gonna keep it undressed until the day we actually eat it. But for our dressing, we're gonna go with a very basic hummus style dressing. So I got this eggplant hummus dressing from Trader Joe's and I plopped about eh, half of it into a jar. This is kind of like a no recipe recipe. I have a more official recipe on my blog. I'll link below if you're interested. And then to that, I just added the juice of a lemon. I like things pretty lemony, so I added both halves. Um, but if you like things a little lighter, you might just want to do half. And then you're just going to mix this all up until it becomes a smooth and creamy dressing. And then that's going to be your salad dressing for the week, which is very nice and easy. And then to go alongside this, I bought three apples in my grocery haul. So you have a nice complete meal, with a little sweet treat at the end. And then for our packed lunch on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're gonna have pesto tempeh sandwiches. So we're going to take that one piece or those two halves of the focaccia bread, pizza crust, whatever thing that we baked in the oven. And we're gonna thinly spread some of the cashew pesto on it. We don't wanna use too much of it because we're gonna use it for one of our dinner options too. But then from there, we're gonna top it with some red bell pepper and some spinach. And then we're going to add in our pesto tempeh that we cooked up just a little bit ago. And then that's it. You can go ahead and close it up and there is your sandwich. It actually holds together pretty well when you eat it. And I like how the tempeh is nice and filling and hearty and it's a great source of plant-based protein. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in a Tupperware or sandwich bag or whatever you so desire. And then as a sort of snack to go along this with this lunch, I am going to use some of those carrot sticks that I chopped earlier. You could just take the separate container with you or you could go ahead and put them in. And then remember, we didn't use all of our eggplant hummus with our salad dressing, so we're going to use the rest of the eggplant hummus as a dip with our carrots. So if you're a very type A person, you know, you get half of the remainder of the hummus each day. And now moving on to our dinner option. So first up, we have this bean and rice for Sony thing uh, with roasted veggies. So you can prep this in individual containers or if you decide to make this the first night you're making it, you're going to add about a third of the Rosoni because we're having this on Monday, Wednesday, Friday into a bowl with the remainder of our veggies. So we use the eggplant and the carrots for our lunch, but we're gonna use the roasted broccoli and the roasted tomatoes for our dinner. So then this is our complete meal. If you want to, you could top it off with a drizzle of garlic or another flavor infused oil and a drizzle of lemon just to add a little bit more juiciness and flavor to it. But it's good on its own too. Just giving you a few different options. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, we're gonna have some pesto pasta with those broccoli stem sort of noodle things, just sort of piece things. So I recommend cooking pasta the day of because it really doesn't take that long. I think this one takes like less than 10 minutes and pasta just really is not that good. Uh, when you cook it ahead of time, it dries out, especially gluten-free pasta. So you're gonna add your pasta to the pot, cook it according to the package instructions. But when there's about two to three minutes left on the cook time, you're going to add your broccoli stems to the pot with a boiling water. So this is just going to lightly cook the broccoli um, with our pasta. You may need to add a minute or two to the cook time because you're adding something cold or room temperature to the hot liquid. But once your broccoli and pasta are cooked to your liking, you're just gonna drain them, return them to the pan, and then we're going to add some of our vegan pesto. So you get half on Tuesday, half of what's left on Thursday. You're just gonna stir that in with the noodles and you're good to go. You can season it with more salt and pepper to taste if you want, or if you have any other seasonings, maybe some nutritional yeast or a vegan Parmesan cheese, you could add that in there as well. But this is our nice and hearty bowl. It is a yellow lentil pasta, so you're still getting some protein, some fiber, some good carbs, and then you also got some greens from your broccoli and your pesto. And, you know, what's more satisfying the pasta? 
Last but not least, it wouldn't be a truly realistic meal prep if there wasn't some form of dessert. So for dessert this week, I bought two chocolate bars and we have some leftover peanut butter so we can have dark chocolate and peanut butter for dessert. Each one of these packages was I think around $2 and each has two bars in it. So you are set for the work week to eat all the chocolate and peanut butter your little heart desires, I guess within reason. All right guys, and that's it for this video. Leave a comment down below and tell me which meal was your favorite. And also don't forget to vote on which store you want me to film one of these at next. I'm gonna try to do these once a month or so. Um, so I would really love your feedback. And if you wanna see more of these, but you're not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button right down there. I post one or two new videos every single week. And I'll actually make a whole dedicated playlist um, for this series. Uh, so you can go through all of them as well. This is the first one, so there will be these two videos, but in the future there will be more, so I'll have that linked down below too. And I think that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you remember to stay awesome. And I look forward to virtually seeing you soon. Bye.